In this lesson, I'll be showing you how to use your calculator features to write the equation of an exponential function based on a table of values. We know from my previous videos that we can write the equation of an exponential function by hand, and it's really not too bad, but sometimes it's a little bit faster to use a calculator, uh, depending on the amount of steps, maybe not, but we're going to practice doing both a little bit. So in the first example, I have a table of values and we know that the initial value, the y-intercept is part of our equation. This gives us our a value for exponential functions. That's that coefficient in front of our exponential component. And then we also know that the change factor has to be included in our equation. So this one has a, a change factor of times 25. The pattern is an initial value of three and a change factor of 25. So let's look at the calculator and use the steps in the calculator to find the equation using that. Now you might have already, if you know a little bit about exponentials, you might have the equation that it should be in your mind. If not, that's okay. We're gonna use the calculator to show that. I'm gonna pull up my calculator app. This is graph in calc 83. Uh, if you have a TI 84 or 83, TI Inspire, uh, anything like that, it should be the same steps. TI Inspire might be a little bit different, but you can look up a video for that if you need to. I'm gonna to go to stat, edit, and I'm going to input my X values in L1. My X values given are negative four, negative two, zero, two, four, six. And then my Y values are going to go in L2. That's 0 0.0048. And when you get it all finished, it should look something like this. It needs to mirror our table of values given. Then I'm gonna to go to second mode to quit. That brings me back to the home screen. And I'm gonna go back into stat. And now instead of editing a list, I'm gonna go into the calculate menu. And if you scroll down, you can see EXPREG, exponential regression. That's the one I'm gonna choose. And then I need to tell my calculator what I'm using for X and what I'm using for Y. I put X in L1. So I'm gonna go second one comma, and then I put Y in L2, enter. And let's see. Okay, this is really cool. So I had an equation in my mind that I thought it would be, if you'll notice in the top, I have a change factor of 25. But the issue is, this is kind of a troubleshooting thing. The issue is that my X values are not going up one, they're actually going up two. So if you can think for a minute, I've got this equation in my calculator where A is three and B is five. So my calculator is telling me that my change factor is five. Let's look at the values we got from our hypothesis. And I wonder how we can arrive at five from 25 using the fact that we went up two instead of up one. Now this is exponential. So we're not dividing. If we divide 25 by two, that's 12 and a half. So that's not it. What's another thing I can do to get from 25 to five? Square root, which makes sense because the, the indice or the index on a square root is a two. So if I had broken this up into the X is going by ones, I would have seen that it went, it had a change factor of five every time. That's why it's important to use your calculator to check your work. It's nice, it's good to know how to do it by hand and then use the calculator as like a secondary fallback type thing to check your work. <clears throat> you have to know how to reason through mathematics in order to understand the answers that you're getting. 
And reasoning is something you can use in all fields. So this equation relates because um, the initial value was three, that's the y-intercept. And then the change factor was actually square root 25 because we went up by twos. Pretty cool, right? So if I had put in a one right here, this would have been 15. And then 15 times five is 75. So now you can see where that five is coming from. Next example, I want you to pause it and try this on your own. See if you can make a hypothesis based on the table of values. Pay attention to the X, the change in X, because that is important. We've seen in the last example that it plays into what's happening. So pay attention to the change in X, pay attention to the change in Y, see if you can come up with a hypothesis as to what you think it would be, and then use your calculator to confirm it. So if we're looking at the table of values, I can see that the change in X is going by threes instead of ones. So that's gonna play into my change factor. And this is being multiplied by 27. My initial value is four. So let's make a hypothesis really quick. If the change factor over three values is 27, in the previous example, we used the square root because we went by twos. So what do you think we're gonna use instead if we're going by threes in the X value? Let's take a look at the equation. I've input my table into the stat edit. My X is in my Y's. <clears throat> now I'm gonna to go to second mode to get out of that. I'm gonna clear this just to have a blank slate. Stat calc, exponential regression, second one comma second two, close it, enter. And we get A is about four, whoops. And my B value, my change factor is three. So where do you think three comes from? The third root of 27 is three. Isn't that cool? I love that. So your change in X plays into um, the change in Y because we moved three steps instead of one. So we multiplied by three, three times instead of one. Pretty neat, whoops. So we can summarize some of our information down here. These equations really play into um, modeling growth and decay, which is used a lot in biology or in um, higher level mathematics. So it's important to understand where these equations are coming from and what each piece means. We know that the A value is the initial value and the B component is the change factor when this is the parent function of an exponential function. The initial value is also the y-intercept of the graph, so it's where it crosses the y-axis. And then the b value is found from one plus or minus the rate, either growth or decay. And I have a video on that if you're unfamiliar with growth and decay, but for growth, that's gonna be one plus R and for decay, that's gonna be one minus R because it's decreasing. The one indicates that first iteration and then the R indicates the growth each time. So that's all I have for this lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.